right. Hi, guys. Welcome to the B&H event space. My name is Elena Espelaire. Thank you for waiting. There's a little bit of a delay here. Um, I am excited for today's little class because this is kind of a laid back, fun thing. Um, and it's an opportunity for me to get an actual family up in front of you and show you how I would really work with them. I feel like a lot of people ask me that. And so I'm excited to do that for you guys today. And I love being in New York City. It's so much fun. So thank you, thank you for having me. So I'm calling this class Family Speed Posing which is kind of a funny thing to say, but um, I really do believe that it needs to be fast when you're working with families, and so especially little kids, right? So that's kind of what we're gonna talk about. Before I go any further though, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about who I am. There are so many educators out there right now, which is a beautiful thing, but you definitely should always know who you're learning from, I believe. That's, that's what I like to do anyway when I learn. So my name is Elena S. Blair. I am a Seattle-based lifestyle family and newborn photographer. I actually also have a boutique school photography segment of my business. Um, I photograph about 150 families a year, and I've been fo at that volume since like 2013. So I've been at this a while. I've got lots of people in front of my lens all the time. Um, this year, I'm trying to bring it down to more like 90 families so we'll see if I can say no enough for that to happen um, I have been educating since 2013 and I reach thousands of photographers every month with my online education platform so this is something that I love to talk about something that I love to teach about and um, so that's why I'm here today and that's why I'm so excited to talk to you guys I want you to follow me on Instagram because this is where I spend a lot of time. Um, I post a lot of education, educational material there, free stuff all the time. So don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And if you follow me, I'll follow you back. Um, Elena S. Blair underscore photography. So that's me. Okay. So before we get the family in, I want to talk to you a little bit about my philosophy with posing and what my style of photography is so that we can all be kind of clear on what, what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so. Right now, in our industry, this style of photography has become very popular, right? This, like, we call it lifestyle. That's what people call me, a lifestyle photographer. Candid, whatever, you know, whatever you want. But because of that, the word pose has become sort of, like, taboo. People will say, I don't like posed photos. I will have inquiries from families that say we want unposed photos, right? Right, this is good. This is what we want. Except, what I want you to know is that it really drives me crazy when I see a super experienced lifestyle photographer post a photo like this and say, I just love it, candid moments. Because I'm going to tell you the whole good truth here is that every time you see something like this, there was a photographer that told them exactly what to do. And the emotion is genuine, and you are creating a space for them to be able to open up and you know be this beautiful version of themselves in front of you, but they need a lot of direction. And before I knew that, I was super frustrated because I would show up to these sessions with no plan, no posing skills, no guiding skills. I had learned light, and I knew my camera well and all of that kind of stuff. And I would show up, and I'm like, why are my families not frolicking through the field like everyone else is on Instagram or how come my families look real stiff and uncomfortable right now and like really unhappy when I just kind of want them to be in love don't you love each other like what's happening here so it was because I didn't know how to pose and so as an educator I feel like it is my like this is a soapbox of mine to say that like posing is super important even if you're a lifestyle photographer unless you are a documentary photographer posing is important so traditional photography would be um, you know, more of that like kind of standard posing where everyone's looking at the camera, hands, everything's kind of perfect. That's That would be traditional. Documentary would be if you like went in and watched a family making breakfast and that kind of thing and you didn't do any guiding at all. And lifestyle sort of fits comfortably in between. Um, and so that's what I do and that's what we're talking about today is this type of posing. So um, the reason I really want to make this clear is because I'll get people who I'm uh, teaching say, but dad's not looking at the camera, you can't really even see him. I don't care. This is the type of photography that I'm talking about. I am talking about connection and love. I'm talking about creating a space and knowing how to guide them and direct them in a way that they look good, that they feel good, but also where they can do this, where they can love each other and they can show you this really beautiful piece of humanity, this little you know connection that every single family has. But I will tell you that I do the same poses all the time and the reason it looks different is because every family is different so posing is important and this is what we're talking about not the um, you know stiff and traditional so you have to work really efficiently when working with families with young children and our little guys have been waiting for like an hour so we'll see how much posing we get out of them but um, my sessions are pretty quick and when you don't have 
a system and you're not working effectively and efficiently, you lose control of the session. And before I knew how to do this, I always felt very stressed out after family sessions. I felt like everybody was you know, running all over the place. I didn't know what I was doing. And I wasn't very happy, and neither were my clients. They need you to tell them what to do, I promise. My sessions are really fast. They only last about 45 minutes to an hour, and I get really big galleries too. I give galleries from like 100 to 150, so pretty big on the size. And I can do all of that in that amount of time because I have posing skills and I have this routine and it works really, really quickly. So what I think is amazing is having go-to poses really leaves more room for you to be creative and for the family to have fun. So I like to think of the analogy of like, parenting a child, right? They say that, um, I've heard this and I think it's such a great example, like if you, if you have a cliff and you want to look over at the view and you don't have a boundary, you don't actually see it. You don't actually see the view, right? Because you can't get to the edge. If there's a boundary, you're able to reach over and see it all. It's kind of like, I know that sounds really deep and you know maybe this is a weird analogy, but I like it because I feel like this is how it is for family photography for me. If I have this routine in the first 10 or 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I've got everything that I need quote unquote, and then after that I can just be creative, I can use light creatively, we can play, we can go to a different part of the location that I haven't shot in before because I know I already did what I needed to do and I can shoot even more just for myself. So having these go-to poses really leaves more room for you, the artist, to be creative. It just makes the whole session run more smoothly. Knowing posing, how to have, a, having a really good routine is gonna make the whole session run so much more smoothly. And this leads to happy clients who come back, which is what you want. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you is today, one of the things I really wanna show you when I have the family here, I have a really small space that I'm working in, which I'm, I'm excited about. Because what I wanna show you is how I maximize each pose. So. While I have posing guides that I've made that have like 50 poses in them, really at each session I do maybe three, five to 10. 10 would be if it was really going well and I thought that I had all of their cooperation and I could do that. But even if you only execute like five poses, you can get a ton of shots from that one pose and I call that maximizing that pose. So I'm gonna show you how I do that, how I go around and kind of capture all these different parts of the pose. Okay, so a few things that I want you to know about posing before we get into it is that you have to be directive. So think of yourself as the creative director of your shoot. So even, um, you know, like in the movie industry, for example, there is a director behind that scene, whatever scene you're watching, that told everyone exactly what to do, where to stand, all of the things. They're, interaction and their personality is what makes it magical, right? This is exactly what you're doing as a family photographer. You got two to 10 people, depending on how many kids they got, right? So you got all these people that you're putting together and you're telling them what you want them to do, you're directing them, and then they're gonna infuse it with their personality and love and connection and make it amazing. And when you give them this direction, they feel better. They want you to tell them what to, what to do. They want you to be the expert. You often have to touch your subjects. <laughs> so this is just the truth, you guys. Like if you're like, I want you to put your hand right there. No, like right there, and they don't do it, and you're like, you gotta be able to just get in there and show them. Um, and this is something that takes a little bit of time, and I know that it's not everybody's personality to do that, but you do have to be able to touch your subjects a little bit when posing. You got to be relatable. Connection starts with you. This is how the magic happens. You can't photograph something, a feeling, if you didn't feel something when you were photographing it. So you have to allow yourself to be a little bit vulnerable and to talk to the families and to be yourself. All of us have a personality that is gonna shine if we let it, right? So when you are working with these families, you're, you're on. You've gotta connect with them. And um, I try to only do two sessions a week because I feel very exhausted afterward. I give all of myself to these sessions. That's why they are able to open up to me. So you have to be relatable. There's really no getting around that. I just want you to know that, like going back to kind of driving this point home of what type of photography we're talking about here, often my subjects aren't looking at the camera. I prefer that they don't. Once in a while, you know, there, I had one in the slides a little while back there where they were, but that's only if it's gonna be a really genuine, deep, real eye contact. I don't want them to look at me. I want them to look at each other. I want them to interact. I want them to feel the love of their family. I am a very, uh, <laughs> this would be represent, a representation of my personality and your work will be like that as well. Everyone's work is unique. I'm just like a feeler. I love to be snuggled and, and I love to do this kind of thing with my family and this is how I photograph families and this is the type of people that I attract. 
So I'm not going to teach you rules about posing. I'm going to teach you how to break them. I will be the last person to learn from that's going to teach you the rules about like, you know, the things that people like to teach about, you know, the, the posing triangle and all of this stuff, rule of thirds. Yeah, I mean, that's important. You do need to know it. And, and you will start to just do it automatically. But we're going to cut people's heads off. I'm going to photograph little fingers and hair. I'm going to photograph m mama and son's feet in the water. Um, that's up at the High Line last summer. Um, we're not going to, we're not going to learn rules today, okay? I just want you to know that right now. I want you to break them. I want you to be an artist. Rules aren't for artists. Okay, so here's what I mean by maximizing a pose. This is just an example. So this was um, a little family, and you know I have them sitting there, so that's the pose. But then within that little pose, I went up and I got her, her feet, and I got a headshot of the little guy with, with daddy looking in there, and a ton more of that same, that same scene. So that's what I'm talking about with maximizing a pose. You can get so much out of one pose. I'm going to show you this little video here. This is just a full gallery that I'm just scrolling through on Shootproof. Thank you, Shootproof, by the way, for getting me here. But it just shows you how I, I want you to see that. So that's, you know, that's one pose, and you can see how I got a bunch of different shots. And then this is the very beginning of the shoot, so I'm doing all of the ones that I really want to make sure I get right at the beginning. Headshots of the kids, kids together, all the family together. Then we go into the beach, and we kind of do the same routine with a different pose. So I'm just showing you a whole gallery here so you can see it as an example. Um, this is Shoot Proof, like I said. I use Shoot Proof for my online proofing. They are amazing. I think they're the best in the industry. And that's just a quick example of this, um, of what I'm talking about with maximizing poses. And this is a pretty big s gallery because this, this session was just going so great, we just kept going. So when we're having such a good time and we're playing at the beach, the, I feel like beach sessions tend to go long for me just because it's fun, um, but it still was only about an hour. But it just we got a ton of images because they were just having such a good time. And see, like even that, like ma Dad was holding her, got really close to her, backed up, got Dad. You can get so many out of each pose. That's going to be like the ticket to you know having this go fast so that the kids don't lose interest in you and start screaming. <laughs> Nobody wants that. So back to it. This is a pretty standard beach session for me. So. Happy to share it. Yeah. All right. Almost done. I, people ask me about full galleries all the time, so when I can show it, I will. Okay. So what I want you to know is that I do have a free posing guide for you that if you want to download it, you can. Um, and that is bit.ly slash ESB, and that's an underscore free posing guide. So you can take a picture of that. Um, because what I like to teach when I'm teaching posing is steps. So I can give you like 10 different steps for each pose, what I told them to get the pose to happen, and then I'd like you to go try it on your own. So this is a free posing guide. Okay, so should we do a posing demo? Yeah, let's bring in this family, okay? And we're gonna be patient with these guys. I'm actually gonna take pictures of them. As you know and see, this is not the scene that I would ever be photographing a family in. <laughs> I like to be outside, I like to play with light, but we're gonna go with it. And it's this mostly what I want you to, to learn about today is the actual posing and um, how I would maximize the shoot. All right, guys, you ready? Yeah. We'll go okay, we'll move pretty quick. Okay, come on up and introduce yourself. This is Alicia. Hi, how are you? Hi, my name's Alicia. She's also a photographer. <laughs> She's in some of my groups. Yes. Come on, boys. Okay, so when I'm posing, I actually usually start with standing poses. We're gonna come stand over here by this. And is this good? You can see me over here? Okay, cool. All right, so um, I'm gonna start with mom and, and I'm gonna get her to pick up little Ann. Can you pick him up? Can, pick can him mom up? pick you up? Yeah. And when I have mom pick up, so look how she picked him up, right, on her hip, because that's how moms hold their babies. I want her to put him tummy to tummy, so I want him right up against you like this. Oh, can you snuggle with mama? And then dad's gonna come in here. I want you to get in. Come here, this way, Phoenix. You could right up against her. Turn your body like this, yeah, and then give her a little pose down. Give her a hug. Okay, I want you guys to just snuggle right into him like that. And then see, now we're going to pull him in here. I'm actually going to move this. See, I'm touching them. I do this all the time. Every hand, like I'm even telling them where to put their hands. This is what I want people to know. This doesn't just happen on its own. You have to tell them what to do. Okay, so this is my first shot. Look how cute they look. Oh my God, stop it. <laughs> all right, so kiss him right there. Now hold on, we're gonna get, I know how to photographer. I'm gonna make this camera work for me in here. I shoot with Canon, this is a um, Mark IV. Oh my God, you guys are cute, oh my gosh. 
Phoenix, look up at your brother. Yes, so good, you guys. Oh my God. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, let's change it. Oh my God, they're so cute. All right, so now let's see. Let's get you. Hold on, let me put you over here to Mama. Hi, mister. Oh, I'm just going to hold you for a second. Okay, you come on over like this and stand right in front. Put him right in front of mom. Like that. And then I'm going to have you hold him over on this side. Like that. Yeah. And then I want you to put this arm around her. Okay, and you like this side. Perfect. Okay. Okay, now mom and dad, I want you guys to give each other a little kiss. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh my God, so cute. Okay, you can put him down. You gotta go to the bathroom. Okay. No, not yet. Wait, come back, little Hunter. guy. Hunter, come back. Okay. Uh -oh. It's okay. Maybe yeah. without him for yeah. a second. All right. So you come out for this way. So I'm gonna do mom and dad, and then I'm gonna have the boys come in. So I want you to stand like this. I want you to put your arm around. Yep, and then you guys go give mom a big hug. Mom and dad, a big hug. Okay, and then she's gonna go right into her cheek right here. Don't look at me, yep, it's good, yep. Don't look at me, look at each other. Hunter, can you give up, give up and give mom and dad a big squeeze? Oh my God, he's cute down there though. <laughs> can you? So see, you can come in here and I'm gonna get a headshot of him in here, and then this one. Hi, Hunter. <laughs> so cute. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So good. Okay. All right, let's, boys, stand over here for a second. We're going to have mom and dad sit on the ground. So, dad, you sit down first and just sit comfortably, and you're going to face me. Men have a hard time sitting down on the ground, <laughs> usually. He did pretty good, but so that's, I always ask dads just sit comfortably. Hold on, boys, get up for a second. Up, up, up. <laughs> So then, Mama, I want you to sit next to him, but I want you to lean up against him with your back and put your hips right next to each other. And then you're going to wrap this arm around her. So like that. Yep. And just lean up. Okay. All right, little man. Ready? You're going to sit on Mama. Ready? Ready? I'm going to have him straddle you again. No, he has to stay here for a second. Perfect. Hold on, Hunter. Hold on. You're doing so good. Okay. Wait. Phoenix. Hunter, do you hear? Can you look at? Phoenix, can you look this way, buddy? Good job. Can you give Mama a kiss? Another one. Then you snuggle right into his cheek there, or anywhere you can. Yep, just like that. Don't look at me. Look at him. Perfect. Don't put this arm around her or waist. Kind of put it more in the on the back, like. Yep, just like that. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> so if we were on grass or something, like this would be so cute, actually. <laughs> like this is not. And then look at how her hands are here. So I'm going to come take pictures of like that and of that. Don't choke on that. Oh, you don't have oh, it in your mouth anymore. Skinny. No, it's green. His tongue is just green. <laughs> no choking. <laughs> so good. Okay, let's get just Mama and these boys. Go ahead and stand up. You know what, Phoenix? We'll get just you and Mama for a minute. Let them have a break. You guys get out of here for a second. Ready? Come here, Phoenix. They're doing. This is hard to be in front of people. So they're doing good. So if can you still pick him up? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. He can be. It's okay. It's okay. Yep. Wrap your legs around her. Wrap your legs around her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna have you guys do? So do go nose to nose and snuggle in with Mom. Nose, nose, nose. There, perfect. Now put your arm, or actually, you know what? Mama, spin him around like this. Ready, set, go. Okay, you can stop. <laughs> perfect. Okay, put him down. All right, come here, mister. Oh, you too. Can you, Mama, hold you? Stand up, Phoenix. We're almost done, buddy. Can Mama hold you? So see how we're already losing him? Like, See what I mean? And we have to fast. You can't expect them to do much more. And you can't expect them to. They're kids. Like, this is what they do. Oh my God, step it. Yes, exactly. No, Phoenix, come here. Phoenix, come over here, buddy. Watch. Come.
come over here and give, let's make a, let's make a hunter sandwich. Can you squeeze him? But I want to see your face, so you look towards me, okay? Look up at your mama, Phoenix. Good job. Beautiful. So cute. And then now I want you to come behind her and just squeeze them. Give them a big hug. Actually, go on the other side, Daddy. Go on the other side. Let's make a, let's make a kid sandwich with these kids. Big family sandwich. Just don't cover his face. Yep. Yes, squeeze. Don't look at me, Daddy. Don't look at me. Perfect. Okay. All right. I'm going to do one more posing, one more sitting one, okay? okay? So if you guys can, it's okay. Let him go for a second. You stand over here. <laughs> Sit um, like cross, uh, like cross leg no. on the floor. Almost done, boys. Yeah. Okay. If you can. Yes, I can. Oh. Don't let him go out. Here. You need to stay in here. Okay. I got it. Sit down on your, sit down on there. Okay, let's not lose children. That's one of my goals. Okay, and then sit right next to him. And I want you to, no, ma ma mama, sit right next to him. Just the same way. Crisscross applesauce. Put your legs right, so make sure your butt is like right next to his. So really close together. Yeah, just like that. All right, come here, sweetie. Can you sit on the mom's lap? And then put your arm around her. Oh. Yeah. Like Perfect. So you scoop forward a little bit, mom, so that he is, and then bring your arm forward. There. See how that? See how that? Like that adjustment made it look a little bit more comfortable. Don't leave them looking uncomfortable. They're a little, they feel uncomfortable. They're gonna look uncomfortable. Right? Okay. So go ahead and look at me. Let's get a money shot for everybody. Ready, guys? Look. Good job. So now what I think we should do is I think we should tickle these guys. What do you think? like I'm seven now I do not and then now wrap them up you guys should we pretend like we're sleeping you ready and close your eyes <laughs> no sleeping here <laughs> perfect okay hunter can I get a picture of you and your brother and then we'll be all done okay mom and dad can get up okay you guys stand up come here come here boy Stand up, Phoenix. Look, 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 look. Stand up. Let's take pictures with Phoenix. Look. Stand up for me. Oh, Hunter. Munch. The light. Uh, this lighting is actually working, which is weird. I thought it was gonna be. Okay. Oh yeah. I appreciate Can you stand it. right here next to your brother? Can you stand right next to him? Right here. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, perfect, you guys. That works. Jack. Can... Open your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> good job, guys. They're doing so good. So now, mom, wait, 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 wait. Stand right here. Mom and dad are going to come get you. You can just do. Stand right here. Okay. You want to come, Hunter, and do this with Hunter, them? Come here. He's like, I'm out. Okay, you guys get behind him. Okay. And on the count of three, they're going to come get you. Ready? You got to wait for it. Wait, you got to stand, stand right by your brother. Stand by your brother. They're going to get him. You ready? Stand by your brother. Okay, stand. It's fine. Okay, ready? Don't worry about it, Phoenix. Stand up. Ready? So come up from behind him and just. Give them like a big bear hug. Okay. They're gonna surprise you. One, two, three, go. Perfect. All right. Okay. So this is when I would stop and we would go do something else, like we would play or walk to a different part of the location. They're already done. So you see what I mean? How you have to work like so fast. You can, you can take him out for a second if you want. Yeah, okay. it's all good. Um, and I'll let you guys see this in a second, but that is all you get. <laughs> this is why I wanted to have them in here. I probably took, let's see how many photos did I take? 300 photos in that little bit of time? Maybe not quite, I might be exaggerating, but maybe, yeah, maybe I did. So, um, and that's it. That's all you need. It has to be that fast. You have to get headshots of the kids, you gotta get the siblings together, and you gotta get the whole family together immediately. I prioritize getting mom and kids together over dad because generally speaking, not in, there's some dads in here, but a lot of times the mom is the family photographer even if they're not a photographer, right? We're just the ones that are like with our phones out even taking the pictures. And so I really do like to kind of spoil the mom a little bit and give her some of that, you know, some time um, behind the lens. But 
yeah, that's it. Do you guys have any questions about that? We can get into a little bit more of posing if you want. We can talk about it, but I would like to answer any questions. Big thanks to Shootproof, guys. They brought me here. Um, and they have a 20% off um, code. If you go through this link, you can get 20% off Shootproof. It is by far the best oh, proofing I'm industry. Late. I'm already signed up. <laughs> you, they'll still give you a discount on your next cycle, I think, oh. if you go. I have a question. Yeah, so questions, please. Mom and dad, but what happens if you get a family, a blended family? Yeah. And there's no dad. How would you pose them? Yeah. So she said, she's asking how I would pose a, bl a family where there wasn't a dad. Right. So I get asked this kind of a lot. I think it's funny. Um, it's an interesting question. But what I always say is I pose this exact same, whether they're little, old, babies, kids, older kids. And I know even teenagers I make get really close to their family and get really lovey. If there was no dad in there, well, we would just do all that without the dad. Mom would have all would be holding the little one, and the other guy would be next to her. Mom would be on the floor with both of them in her lap. Same. I would do it exactly the same. So every pose that I teach, even when you get one of my guides, I always say, think of it as a base. This isn't a rule. Like I said, we're not teaching rules. I'm giving you the tools and the ideas to get started, and then you're going to make it your own. And they're going to make it their own. Like their little personalities, that's what made that, that, those photos, right? They were so freaking cute. If I was trying to make them do this and be perfect, well, A, they'd be miserable and they probably weren't going to do it. But B, that's not really what they look like, right? That's not who they are. So that's not the style that I'm going for. It's not, it doesn't speak to me. There are photographers who do that really well. And there is a time and a place for a portrait like that. That's just not my style. So yeah, I would do it exactly the same. Sorry, long answer. That's the story of my life. Yes? Uh, you bring lights to the I don't bring lights. I don't own any lights or flashes or reflectors. Yeah. I know. I am a camera gear minimalist. This is what you see here is everything that I own. I have a, I, I do shoot with two bodies at the, at the same time. Um, uh, because I like a shorter and a longer lens. That way I can just, my, my, when I started doing this, my sh session time went down by like 20 minutes because I would like have to sit down and change lenses. Um, but I don't own any lights. I am a natural light photographer. And if you see my work online, I really prefer to use light really playfully. Um, if it's sunny in Seattle, it's not always. <laughs> but when it is, I really like to get like sunbursts and um, I shoot at golden hour. So yeah, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm just not a light person. So I have a um, 50 millimeter 1.2 L, a 35 millimeter 1.4 L, and a 135 2.0 L. Um, I prime, if I had to pick just one, I would pick the 50 all day. It is hands down my very favorite, always has been, it's, and it's just a beautiful, Canon makes such a beautiful lens with the 50, like the color is just amazing. So, yeah. Yes? So then for settings, in terms of how much depth of field you're getting, you're yeah. focusing on, what are you usually outside, what are you For set, so she's asking about my settings. So I am a um, big fan of shooting pretty close to wide open, no matter what the size of the family is. And that's because it works for me. So I, I would say I shoot about 2.0 to 2.5. It works for me because I keep them so close. So they're always in the same focal plane. Even if they aren't, and you get a little bit of you know blurriness from someone who's up front or a little bit from the back, it doesn't matter. It's usually very intentional that I do that. Um, us as digital photographers, you know, we use the terms like tack sharp and all of this stuff. Where that's really not how photography started, you guys. If you do any research, like film photography is actually very soft. Um, we make the people sharper than they are in real life with digital photography. It's like every you know pore is showing. So I actually prefer it to look a little bit more. I want it in focus. I want what I want in focus, but I want it to look a little bit softer. I like what it does to skin tones. I like when I get close to somebody's face that their ears are falling off into um, being out of focus. So that's just a stylistic choice for me. Um, for, folk, for keeping things as sharp as you want them, it is about shutter speed t when you're working with families. And so I always make sure that my shutter speed is super fast. It's usually like 500 plus. Um, and so I will bump my ISO up if I have to do that, uh, if I want to do that. And I think my ISO in here was only like, so 1600. Um, when I shoot newborns, in, you know, when I do that indoor, I will go up to like 4,000 in my ISO, and it's fine. They blow them up big. They look great. As long as you don't, as you're exposing properly, you're not going to get very much grain. And I actually don't mind a little bit of grain. I think it's beautiful. So there's me breaking those rules again, telling you. Yeah, does anyone have any questions? So you work indoors Please ask. With families? I work indoors with newborns, yes. 
some of my families will ask me to, sh to photograph their, you know, do the older family dynamic inside, but mostly I'm known for my outdoor, you know, stuff for that. But with my um, newborns, yes, all indoor. Yeah, I always say I just need one good window. Usually it's the master bedroom, usually fine. We usually do the whole shoot, like, right there on that master bed, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, my first priority is, is my f-stop, usually, so um, my aperture. I usually start at like 2 to 2.5, and then I want the shutter speed to be fast. And actually, because of that, you, you're letting so much more light in, too, when you're shooting more op wide open like that. So if I am notice that I'm having to, you know, for expo exposure, when I'm looking at my meter, if I notice that I'm having to drop my shutter speed, I will put push up the ISO. So outdoor, I usually start at 400 and just adjust accordingly. And usually that's, that works like the whole time. You know, when you're outside, it's such a different story. Inside, I usually start at about 1,000 and go up if I have to. Yeah, these cameras are built for that. <laughs> so many people will be like, I remember when a guy, um, I was having my stuff serviced. I get it serviced a couple times a year, just like cleaned and calibrated and stuff. And he was saying, what was he saying about, he was joking about how high the the ISO goes on this Mark IV, and I was like, I know, it's amazing, you can like shoot in the dark, and he's like, yeah, but you can't use anything over 2,000. I was like, I'm not going to argue with you, but <laughs> yes, you can. So the, they're made for it. They're beautiful cameras. They have these really high capabilities. It's okay. I'm not saying that artificial light isn't something that is a beautiful thing to learn. I just don't think you need it if that's not something you want to do. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, we shoot. So I shoot it full, uh, you know, large raw, like the largest raw I can. Yeah, um, and then I, when I upload it to the families, it's full resolution. I give them full res files, and I, um, we can get into that. I'm all inclusive. So when they pay their price for me, they get an album, and they also get the digital files. And I've always given full res because there was a time in the beginning when I was going for the, like I, you know, somebody told me that I should never sell full resolution photos and I should only give them. You know, up to, to printing like at five by seven or whatever, because you know there's photographers who really want the control of printing. I'm not one of them. Um, but what what was happening is they were print, printing really big photos with that small resolution file anyway, and then they were looking bad. So I just give them the full res file. I recommend it if you're going to give. Yeah. So and they're big. <laughs> they're big when you shoot raw. They're really big files. They definitely are, but. What? Workflow. Workflow from the memory cards? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we, I take them home and I upload them immediately to a, an external hard drive. I save, I'm a camera, or I'm a photo hoarder, I would say. I save every shot that I take ever. Um, and so I just buy more hard drives. So I have like a hard drive collection, so many of them. Um, so I upload to one hard drive and then I back up immediately to another one. So always in two places, always, always, always. Um, and then I don't reformat the card. I try not to until I've put the gallery on shoot proof. Um, my editing process, I actually outsource my editing. I use a company called the Image Salon. Um, but I didn't do that until I'd been in business for about eight years and it made sense financially. So um, they're gr an incredible company. Um, so I outsource my editing. I get it back, I run a black and white action, I do do that, on my, I just do a batch on all of them, upload to shoot proof, and um, you can see, we can go back to that gallery if you wanna see, and that's where they, uh, this is where they can order, yeah, and this is where they order and download, it all happens on shoot proof. Um, this is really on brand for me, shoot proof is just clean and modern, and the process is so fast, so we are all inclusive, however, we do offer extra ordering right on shoot proof and it's linked to the lab so when they order I just look and make sure that they didn't do something weird with the crop I send it to my lab uh, click the option to have boutique packaging and I never see it it goes straight to the client so I literally make you know sometimes a thousand dollars in two seconds because it took me like two seconds to click it so it's such an efficient way to run an online business shoot proof really really helps with that how did I get my style to where it is now How did I get my style to the editor? So they, um, this company is a boutique company. They're incredible. I know the owners too personally. They're they're these they're wedding photographers that were feeling overworked. Um, and I know any of you in here are watching at home that has 
got when you get your business to where you where you wanted it, right? You wanted to be busy, and then all of a sudden you realize, wait, I'm spending hours and hours in front of this you know computer, and you start to feel like you're going to burn out. So that's why they opened their company, and that's why I started um, sending it to them. And what you do, you get is you get a Skype call with you can have you can get a Skype call with every gallery you upload with them actually if you want I don't ever anymore but you do a Skype call with your editor and she sits there and edits some of your stuff in front of you to show you what you know kind of be like okay what do you think and then you're like yes that's gonna work um, if sometimes once in a while I'll get something back and I'll say oh the skin tones look a little blue or whatever she sends it back like that day the whole gallery is fixed so the customer service is amazing or sometimes I'll see a style my, my editing is very clean like the, my stuff kind of comes out of camera almost exactly how I want it because I really use light in a way that's pretty intentional. Um, but sometimes I'll see like you know a friend on Instagram or something the way that they edited something I really liked it and I, I just send the link to my editor and I say hey we should try this on the next gallery and she will. So it's really great. It's a and it's only one editor. I have the same editor every time. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, the year that I did that I you know that was like such a huge expense. This has been. I'm getting into my third year of, of having my editing be outsourced. I was able to make significantly more money actually because I was able to take more sessions because I wasn't spending so much time editing them. So, yeah, it was my biggest year. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I, yeah, she asked about my, my culling process, and I do do the culling. The editing company will do that for you. I don't want them to. I want to be the one to do it. I am a pretty relentless, ruthless editor, uh, I mean, um, culler. I just, like, I go through, and I pick the ones I want, and that's it. Like, I'm not like, eh, these two look really, like, I don't really debate too much. Um, the only, now that, now that I am outsourcing, though, I do have to be a little bit, like more mindful because I'm paying per image that they're editing, so I do try to be a little bit better about not sending a bunch that are similar. Um, but uh, yeah, I am a pretty ruthless color. It only takes me about half an hour, so I go through pretty quick. Um, some of my workshops, I have videos showing me culling because I know a lot of people are, cu are curious about what that. Hmm? What software? I use Photo Mechanic for culling. Yeah, it's pretty great. I mean, it renders them immediately. You upload, and it's just like, boop, they're there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, yes. Do you have a goal in mind for the numbers that you're going to put on the gallery? Do I have a goal in mind for the numbers? Well, I guarantee a minimum of 75. That's what we say. Um, I always give more. Yep, I always give more. It's very rare that I'm close to that 75. Once in a while, like if the family only has one kid, um, you know, it'll be more like 80 or 90. It won't be too much higher. When there's a lot of kids or when we have a lot of play time like this at the end of a session, then. Um, you know, they get more. So I love to under promise and over deliver. Really love to do that. Yes. Yeah. What's Sorry. the editing involved? I mean, I see you have black and white and color there, but um, what do they do besides that? What do they do? So I actually run the black and white action on my on my work because I don't need them to do that. I run it on their edits. But um, what they do, the editing involves is you, it's very uh, it's just like basic color correction. Mm -hmm. So I shoot auto white balance because I'm moving around so much and like I just. To be honest, that works for me. Like everyone will say, well, what about the expo? There's all these things, you know, with white balance. I'm like, I don't know, shooting raw, it's really easy to fix it afterward. So they'll do basic color corrections. Um, I usually contrast. I like my work to be a little bit contrasty, so they add contrast. Um, and then they will play with, sometimes they'll have to bring back the sky. It wasn't going to happen at this session. It was too bright. But like sometimes the sky is able to be brought back, and, sh and she'll do that for me. Um, and that's it. So pretty quick. It's uh, they will crop if it needs to be done. I usually crop in camera, though. I don't do a lot of post-processing cropping. It just, um, I, I, can, I see it in camera now, you know? But when you're learning, it's, it, it doesn't always happen that way, so, yeah. Yes, yes. In the past experiences, uh, if a child is just having a bad day, do you reschedule? If a child is having a bad day, do I reschedule? In 10 years, I've never had to do that, and I, you know, I'm not lying when I say that. People don't believe me. But I really think that this the reason is is because we have a very intense, or that, uh, that's not the right word, um, in-depth education process for our families. So we talk to the families a lot about how to prepare their children before the shoot, what to expect. I feel like I attract families that are pretty laid back and because um, my portfolio is very true to what I, like the type of, 
families that I attract uh, that want a little bit more of a laid back experience and so it tends to go really well. I think also because I have this, this these poses and because I have a routine, it's like that structure makes it happen really quickly before I lose the kid. <laughs> before I lose the kids patience so I think that that helps a lot with kids is if you have posing and you have a routine you're able to keep the session under control yeah yes um, you mentioned that you shoot in Nashville right yeah so golden hour would you scout the various location where you're going to shoot beforehand yes so you said you mentioned that I uh, shoot in natural light golden hour and do I scout the location? Yes, I am 100% in charge of what location we shoot at. I never let the family choose. I'm actually kind of a control freak when it comes to all this stuff, but I think that that's why everyone's happier actually because you know they want you to be the expert. So in Seattle, we are really lucky. We have like in the city, and you guys do too here in New York, but um, we have like gorgeous locations that look like we're out in the, <laughs> in the, you know, this field in the mountains and we're not, we're like in the city. So I have, I would say I have about, I have a blog post about it. I should. If, if this were live right now, I would have my assistant find it and link it for you, but I only shoot at about five locations, maybe eight if we're, and I um, give the family a choice, beach, mountain, field, or urban. And then when they choose that, I say, okay, this is where we're gonna go. So that's how we do it. And yes, I do almost always shoot at golden hour. In the summer, like this one, it, it's a little bit earlier, it doesn't get uh, dark in Seattle till like 10 o'clock. Um, yeah, <laughs> really late. Yeah, so I have to, you know, compromise with that a little bit because I mean I don't want to be out at 9 p.m. and neither do they. So, um, <laughs> so we shoot a little bit earlier, and I just make sure that I have some good environmental elements that are going to give me that golden hour look for you know some of them. But yeah, yeah, you're welcome. All right, any other questions? Anyone else? These are good questions. I love answering questions for you guys. It's the best thing about live stuff. Pinterest. Yeah, okay, so that's such a good question. She said, do I ever get the family that is trying to get me to do a Pinterest pose, something they saw on social media, yeah. or something different than what I'm offering? Never, zero times. Now this is why. Because I, first of all, in their contract, say that I am the creative director of the shoot and that I will not recreate any poses. I also tell them that I don't guarantee any poses or family groupings. So if they don't get a shot with the two kids together, they can't get mad at me about it because I didn't, I, I told them I might not do it. Do I try to do it? Yes. Yeah. Um, why also that never happens to me is because my process is very much me in control. So right, even before they inquire, we start educating, even when they inquire before they book, we start educating them. We say, here's an ex a blog post, a recent blog post. Here is the kind of, an FAQ page that's gonna tell you what kind of photographer I am, blah, 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 blah all that kind of stuff. Um, and so they're very much like already in the process of education with us. And then my welcome site, ex gets them prepped up again for the, the session. Here's what you can expect. Make sure the kid has had a nap. Make sure your kid has been fed. Um, and I'm not gonna guarantee that your kid even smiles. I'll say that, and everyone will make your kid smile. If they are not happy, then that's how it goes. This is an actual capture of who you are right now. So we try to be really open about that. I think that um, also when you have a very solid portfolio, meaning that like it's very clear what your style is, you don't get people asking you to do the things that they see on Pinterest. So it doesn't happen. It did in the beginning, and it doesn't anymore. So, been at this a while now, but yeah, yeah. Um, I know you're saying it doesn't happen in the actual sessions, but are there situations where you get families who are like the vibe is wrong? So you mean before? Yeah, like, like when they're being quiet. Yep. Yeah. So it is uh, not. We get like um, I get about five inquiries a week, and only one converts. I mean, that's a, I'm making like a general, we, I could get you numbers if I had it all out, but that's about right. Why? Because we do screen out people who are not a good fit for us. Um, and I say we because I do have an associate now. Um, when uh, somebody, you know, says, you know, they send me an email and they're like, we um, are hoping to have a photographer for, for, for our one-year-old's cake smash. Red flag. I don't do cake smashes. So why are they asking me that? Because they just sent an email to every photographer that they found on the first page of Google, right? And they're trying to, it, in the old days when I was, and it's no, no shame in doing this when you need money, by the way, when I was first starting, I took like the weirdest jobs because I wanted to be a photographer so bad and make money on it and it was worth it and I'm glad I did that. But now that kind of thing comes in and we say, we don't do that, but you know, 
best of luck to you in someone that's going to do that really well. We just don't do it well. So whenever someone talks about props or anything like that, I, I'm like, well, did you even look at my portfolio? They might not have. They might just be like looking for a photographer. They don't care what your work is like. And that's not the kind of people we want to work with. So it's all about education. And it's OK to say no. It is super OK. Yeah. And it's, you, you want that vibe to be right. You know, you want to really like get along with the people that you're photographing. It's going to be so much better. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Do I use props as a newborn? No, I don't. Mm -mm. So I, um, ha I actually have a class on it. We, we, we are 100% lifestyle with newborn. And it's the same thing where um, my portfolio has no props or posing. We don't pose the newborn either. I feel like it's, un it's not safe. So no posing at all. Um, I mean, we do take photos of the baby by themselves. And I have ways that I place the baby, so sort of posed. But um, yeah, no, no props. Mm -mm. I come into my newborn shoots with my camera. That's it. A newborn? Yeah. Mm -mm. No. They're babies. No. Nope. They can't. You can, yeah. No. I just take pictures of them. <laughs> I always say that, in my opinion, newborns are perfect the way they are. Like we don't need to do anything to make a newborn look better than they already do. I mean, there's nothing more beautiful or perfect than a newborn. So you won't be seeing bunny ears on my babies. They look exactly. <laughs> you know, I have some friends who do that, and they're geniuses at it. They are so good at pose newborn. It just was not for me. Like you had no. Yeah, for my session flow, how did I get it? Um, and I didn't really talk about it as much today because we were mostly talking about speed posing. But um, just from all of the times that I've done it, you know, the, that I've been photographing families, I just really learned what works. And I usually start with standing poses because they're not as like, you know into me being on top of them sitting down yet. Like, they, we don't know each other just yet. So I start with standing poses. And then we usually move to another spot. And we do sitting poses and then laying down. Um, and I make sure to get siblings right at the beginning, too. Because I just know now how quickly you lose their attention. So I make sure to get all of that right at the beginning. So how did I establish it? It was just from a lot of practice. Um, and then it just now I know it works. And it works for thousands of photographers that have taken my classes. Like it's just so nice to be like, okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to be done. And then I get to just have fun, and then I can try new poses because now I have time. And if it doesn't work, whatever, doesn't matter. I got a ton of pictures, right? So, yeah, that's how that works. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm a big fan of uh, routines. <laughs> I'm kind of like a one-trick pony. I'm like, this is what I do. Works well. <laughs> I've been doing the same session flow since 2013. When I started doing it, I like I just have never changed it because it works. So, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Like I said, that was going to be a fun and relaxed class just to see how, what it's like to work with a family. You know, it's busy, so it's you gotta you gotta have poses. You gotta be ready for it. All right. Anyone else? Any more questions? No. Okay. I think we're good. Thanks, guys. <laughs>